Welcome back to Fort Myers Beach, Florida, home to our parents and our Hurricane Ian relief series, where during the weeks and now months following the storm, we've been documenting stories of hope made possible with the help of your GoFundMe donations, while also continuing to sort our way through intense levels of cleanup, heavy emotions, and sheer exhaustion. Sleeping on the job! Ah! But also reveling in all the moments of joy found amongst the debris and rubble. This is unreal. Still on the hangar. Hey, Dad! You're not gonna believe this. Yeah! You're about to. In the mud? On the side of Steve's house. On the fence. And if you thought that was good, well, Today, things are about to get a whole lot better. Would you like to tell everyone what's happening here? How's that look? <laughs> Perfect. Basically, we've been without a ceiling fan for far too long, and it's far too hot. So I ordered a new ceiling fan because all the circuit boards were out of stock, and even if I could find one, it was gonna be over $100 just for this piece to replace it. So I just ordered a whole fan. It's slightly a different model, so I'm hoping this one worked exactly as the last one. Here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna push the on-off button. Oh, it works. Oh my goodness. Now I don't think Florida's trying to kill me anymore. <laughs> With this fan, it will not succeed. <laughs> this is only step one of our cooling measures we're taking. We'll show you what's up next. So right now we're installing a household AC unit that we can plug to shore power to keep Brittany and I cool while we got our temporary camp going right now. My dad's helping me out. Couldn't do it without these two guys because this is a tough job. All right, Thumbs up, boys. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Look at the camera, hey, George. George, look over. Yeah. Best guys for the job. Best guys. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna draw the top. Keeping us cool in that Florida sunshine. I already did. So we just made a last minute change. We decided to go with the air conditioner on the driver's side. Are you gonna invoice me when we're done or how does that work? Oh, this is a big bill. Big bill. <laughs> Doing a great job. We got multiple projects going as we speak, so everybody's lending a hand. The biggest challenge we're having right now is trying to get the air conditioner drawing before we cut it into this piece of wood straight up and down because when the doors are open, it's a very different angle than when the doors are closed. This is a very unconventional way of doing this, but we got to do something custom here, and it takes two minds to engineer such a feat. Hold on, I gotta loosen the one bracket a little bit. I think we got a good fit here. We're putting some last minute touches on, some brackets on the backside. I really need this in the van. Brittany needs it too. Here it's looking good. Cool, <laughs> cool setup. And Mitchell, we love you, but we don't need you anymore. Brittany and I having AC, cooling our van gives us a little bit of relief at the end of the day. We've been working some really long, hot days and Brittany can't even wear a mask to help her with the mold and have some relief because it's just sweating all the time. It's muggy. Just to have this to come back to at the end of the day changes our living conditions. We were suffering a lot. After eight years of living on the road, Drew and I are not accustomed to this sort of van life far away from the peace, beauty, and fresh air of the far away. And we've learned, like the birds, how to follow our hearts and the seasons to ideal temperatures year round. But we know nothing lasts forever, and we're here for a greater purpose. So we find ways to make it better and retreat into nature when we can, enjoying and remembering all that made us fall in love with this lifestyle in the first place. like outdoor movies projected onto our house. Basically turning our home into its own sort of incredible drive-in theater. Cool. And with the Vankyo Leisure 470 Pro, the smallest full high-def projector, which not only features up to 250 inches of stunningly bright and crisp 1080p entertainment, but with its unprecedented small size, 40% smaller than other native 1080p projectors out there, you could pretty much do this on the side of any sort of house, or wall, or even probably trees. Being the best outdoor projector for movies, sports, and gaming, it provides cinema image quality with 30% higher brightness and a powerful built-in 3-watt speaker, creating an immersive surround sound cinema and gaming experience. 
Plus, with its ultra-fast 5G slash 2.4G dual-band Wi-Fi technology, you can enjoy your favorite movies, TV shows, and endless entertainment with enhanced speed and stability wherever your adventure takes you. It's also extensively compatible, providing you with ports of all kinds to be able to play and source your media from. And by using our code ADVENTURE and the link below, you will get $20 off the best outdoor projector anywhere. This is a big moment for us. We've gone back and forth this morning. We were talking with our lawyer, with each other, with the heavens. <laughs> and, you know, when it comes down to the water mill, are we gonna believe in the possibilities and let the dreamers within win? Or are we gonna let our fears and our doubts make us let this opportunity go? What a great first property to start with. I still love it so much. It just, it would need a lot of approvals to be made habitable and actually get proper approval and license. Are you saying that you would still buy it? Cause I'm okay with that. Welcome. When it comes down to it. <laughs> Not easy. I love the possibilities. I don't know, we got some talking and thinking to do. There are a few concerns though, I know. Like this Wi -Fi, road. Wi-Fi, the steepness of the road. Yeah. Some other things to consider. We'll see, but what a fun house to start with. And there's a lot of deadlines approaching where if we don't make the decision now, then the renewal of the building permit situation will expire, which basically makes the whole deal fall apart. So it's now or never. A lot of money on the line. And there's been a lot of constructing that we didn't foresee, meaning, you know, Hurricane Ian and this whole situation, but... Let's make that phone call. We've talked. It's not easy. I guess let's move forward on the whole thing. You made an informed decision and uh, that's basically all you can have now is the confidence that you made an informed decision. Whatever comes, well, it, it will not be because you were not properly informed about everything. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. So, you know, that it's kind of a comforting yet not not a lot, but you know, <laughs> yeah, enough. What you have. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of inputs and data to answer the questions as well. We are counting on Eric, um, and you know, that's it. You know the risks, and yeah. as long as you know the risks, you know that the higher the risk, the greater the um, fall or the win. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing it. Wow, today's a very big day. Not only have we decided to sign our names to a property, at least- We have appointed a lawyer to sign for us right. in Portugal right now. For the promissory, the 10% down situation. So there are a few, you know, little contingencies for the finalization of the property, but today is a huge step forward for us in terms of owning property. Can you believe this time has come? <sighs> yes, it's about time. <laughs> You know, there's two choices in life. You can choose to be overwhelmed and stuck, or you can choose to face your fears and manifest those things that ask you to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. It was a hard decision to make because we know there's gonna be challenges, there's gonna be discomfort, there's going to be ways that we are asked to expand. <sighs> I think you just got a foot taller today. It's about time. <laughs> we're All definitely right. growing in many, many ways. And on top of that, maybe even the biggest news, the most exciting news that we have heard in, I don't know, ever since the hurricane, is the fact that Drew's parents are going to have power. They today. finally got put on the list and they can be hooked back up. A sense of normalcy restored for them. Yeah. Wow, almost three weeks since the storm. Oh my goodness. And some hope for us in our future, yeah. which hopefully gives them hope and a vision for you know, a beautiful place they can come visit and yeah. see us manifesting our dreams and see us flourish. So one of the big steps to getting your house back up and running is have electrical engineers come out. They've replaced some of the components, the boxes, the mains, so that Florida Power and Light can come out here and hook us up to the grid essentially at these homes. Here's the main box. It's our lucky day. Seems like they're here. It's a big moment, boys. Big moment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so as we test all the light fixtures, the switches, 
Just some, we're having a hard time figuring out exactly what's going on. Like these out here. <laughs> these are little strobe lights above us right now and we cannot figure out which of the many switches controls that. These are our temporary zipper doors right now. Refrigerator's on. And now we are headed to the library so that we can finalize the library. finally our paperwork for the D7 visa application. Something that we've had completed for almost a month now. We were just waiting on prepaid postage so we could send it to the proper place in Washington, D.C. We're on our way to FedEx and I just want to say it seems so fitting that we would have made our decision about the water mill, said that we're going for it, and at the same time, on the same day, we're mailing in our D7 visa applications. Just feels like the stars have aligned today. We have arrived. We got a big packet of papers. I thought we'd come back from Portugal and have this sent within like two weeks, and then two weeks rolled into about six weeks. Well, you know, life is full of unpredictable things, but in the end, as long as you persevere and keep believing, you can get your things in the mail on time. How about that? After you. It should be number three. Okay, I'm just gonna like put them here. Yeah, I think attach them right there. It's reusable. I know. That's great. Yeah, maybe they can send us our paperwork back in the same envelope. <laughs> A lot of documents in here. Whoa. It's done. It. They're sent. They're in. The day has come. The time is here. We're relocating to the beach. Let's get that air conditioner out and we're gonna go park ourselves up at a new piece of real estate. Beachside amongst a lot of debris. But first, I don't think they'd be too happy if I was driving down the road with our air conditioner sticking out of the driver's side window. <laughs> Let's remove this bad boy. One last one. Do you need my help for this part? I don't know. Let's see if I can manage it. Oh, look at that water. It's all the condensation. Whoa. Ah, that's heavy. Oh, Spirit's missing an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to reinstall that air conditioning unit once we get to the beach, but they have a 5 p.m. curfew for anyone going to the beach, so we have to make sure that we are crossing that bridge in time. We gotta go. Well, I think we can transport it sitting right there. I'll see you there. On delay. On delay. Drew's gonna drive Spirit and I'm gonna drive our little rental here. Having just taken a break from the hurricane scene, I felt strong enough to go back to the beach and inspired even to try living in Spirit in his parents' driveway, especially since now they had power. But I was still a bit uncertain about it all. I do want to say that even though it has been weeks, even months after this hurricane, there will be debris to clean up. This is not a fast process and I don't want the world to forget that or, you know, we had so many people in the beginning who wanted to come and help but nobody was allowed on the island except for residents then and, you know, it's not a safe environment to ask for people to want to come help and risk getting cut or stepping on something or something falling on them like it is just not a safe place so we do appreciate all of the offers but still i'm not sure i feel comfortable asking anyone to come into this i guess this is our new neighborhood While Drew works to get spirit level over here i've definitely noticed a few more details that i didn't notice last time and there's definitely a dusty, musty smell going on over here. But it looks a little bit better than last time. What got turned on yesterday? Water. We took a hot shower for the first time in our own shower. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah. You never realize how much you want that stuff. You're not gonna <laughs> take that stuff for granted anymore. No, it sure yeah. doesn't make you appreciate everything. I mean, that's the thing Aww. it does do. 
Wow. Now we gotta get you guys hooked up. <laughs> yeah, we can feed it through there. There we go. There we go. Okay, here we go. See, we're plugged in now. You know, it's true. Van Life really does prepare you for situations where you have to take care of yourself. So it's your power, your water. For us, it's not so different than like parking out the BLM without those kinds of things, but. Water. Water. That's great. This deserves a dance, a water dance. Thank you. Uh, Praise the heavens for power and water. The palm tree is still intact. This is a strong palm tree. Look, it has the whole weight of the house on its side. <laughs> That's remarkable. It's an amazing little palm tree. You're an amazing little palm tree. <laughs> Look what we just spotted right here. A dinglehopper. We found them. The Fort Myers Beach Letters. FMD Strong. I bet they're heavy. Oh, oh my. Uh, <laughs> this is a job for you. What if we put them in the wrong order? <laughs> I think everybody wants to see a scene of you running and going oh, through all the birds. Really? Look at them all. Are there a lot? Let's do it. There they are, babe. All the birds. Nature is back in full force right now. I blend in so well. It's still crazy to me that these are the scenes we see as we walk home. This was the 7-Eleven. What blows my mind is how the storm surge blew out these bricks and the entire back wall, which was also bricks. That's insane looking to me. The amount of force that had to be coming. Wow, just blows my mind. But it still manages to be beautiful. You know? Looks like they're gonna pick up the person. Delivery. Ooh. These guys just stopped by on their golf cart. It's World Central Kitchen. Check out how yummy that looks. We actually raised money, about $300 for them on Instagram. Yeah. That smells amazing. <laughs> I really appreciate what they do for us while we're out here working hard. At least we don't have to stop, go figure out how to cook yeah. or get fed. It just allows us to do what we gotta do and make it through this time. It truly makes the day that much better, more delicious. Energy. Yep. You guys taking a little bubble bath. This is a nice little brush here. Yeah. Here are Drew's dad's poor Kit Kats. I think they've seen better days. But at least there was water to rinse them off. Between power and water, it's hard to say which one they were more grateful to have back on. But being able to clean these items here at the house, that changed everything for them.
It actually made it feel like things were finally starting to look like normal again. Well, so long as you don't look at the pool. Which, if you recall, did have a couch in it at one point. So our friend here who lives out on the beach, he actually was here during the hurricane. We have a sofa in the back pool and he's an absolute beast and he's gonna help us remove it right now. You guys have no clue how stinky and smelly the stuff growing in that pool really is. That is one nasty load in that wheelbarrow. It's sloshing around, that's all kinds of muck and mud, and you probably are wondering what the heck I'm doing right now. Well, we're cleaning out the hot tub because it's gotta be pumped. We're gonna have to do an acid wash to it. Drew's dad was just cleaning out the hot tub. Ew. You ready for this? Seriously questioning my readiness. Stand back. Oh, I think the wheelbarrow was crying. It smells really bad, like worse than usual. It looks like feces. It looks like cement. Big, wet, runny ones. Round two. The next step is to do an acid wash to see if we can get the mold discoloring off the edge of this tub. And is that the final step or is there another step? There's a step of trying to dig all this out of here and haul it out to the street out there. One of the big issues we're having using this pump is that it's getting clogged because of all the soot, the rocks, the nasties. Mm. So it's kind of a two person job. They were quoted over $3,000 to have someone come over and pump out the pool and jacuzzi, which they were certainly tempted to pay and his dad probably wouldn't have had a choice had Drew not been there to help. Remember these days? We'll be back. Sunset Riders. <laughs> there are probably hundreds of people here right now enjoying the sunset. Sunday night sunset, maybe it's a thing here. That guy is pointing on his roof. He's like, this is part of my roof. This is so beautiful. It's really special, all these people out here. It was a powerful moment, everyone watching the sunset together like that, gathering for the first time since, paying their respects to what once was and to what will be again, in its own newly restored magical way. Join us in our next episode as things continue to get brighter and cleaner every day.